In this video, I am going to talk you through stereo isomerism in alkenes. We are going to start by looking at cis trans isomers, and then we're going to move on to the EZ isomer system for alkenes. And we're going to run through the rules for figuring out whether you have an E isomer or a Z isomer. But I think it's important, as always, that we start right back at the beginning. Let's take ethene. With ethene, we've got carbon. It forms a sigma bond to a second carbon. That carbon is forming a sigma bond to two hydrogens. And the same with the other carbon. And then we know that carbon has four orbitals, hybrid orbitals, available for bonding. In each case, each carbon atom has got a p orbital, which is not used in the bonds between the carbon and the hydrogen, these single sigma bonds. So these p orbitals essentially merge to form an area of electron density above and below the carbon hydrogen skeleton. So with a with an alkene, what we have is a double bond between two carbon atoms. And that double bond consists of a pi bond and a sigma bond. If this is completely new to you, I suggest very strongly that you stop here and go back and look at my video on sigma and pi bonding. Because what is very important with an alkene is that the presence of this pi bond means that we've got no rotation about our carbon-carbon double bond. This is known as restricted. There is restricted rotation about the carbon-carbon double bond. What does that mean? Well, let's take butene for example. Carbon, well, a methyl group and a hydrogen, a methyl group and a hydrogen. This form of butene is not the same as this. They are isomers of each other. We cannot turn the first isomer into the second isomer without breaking the carbon-carbon double bond. There is no rotation about a double bond like there is with single bonds. You could build a molymod model and prove that to yourself. As a result, these isomers, they're called stereoisomers, have very slightly physical properties and sometimes they have different chemical properties as well. Now, in the old system, or the most basic system of figuring out which isomer I've got, we use cis and trans. This would have been cis but to in, and this one here, trans but to in. Cis meant that the two methyl groups were on the same side of the carbon carbon double bond. And by side, let's take a horizontal plane here. And with my trans isomer, my methyl groups are diagonal. They're opposite each other. So cis isomer and the trans isomer. However, if I take a very slightly more complicated molecule, let's start here. Always draw them out so they look like ethene with side groups makes it much easier for figuring out anything to do with isomerism. Let's take this molecule here. What should we have up here? Uh, let's take a bromine up there. Would that be the cis or the trans? Who takes priority? Is it the methyl group? And the chlorine that should be opposite the bromine or on the same side? The cis-trans system doesn't work. So this developed into EZ isomerism, which comes with a set of rules that allows us to distinguish between, say, this molecule and let's go with the chlorine up there, methyl group, and the hydrogen and the bromine. 
So these two molecules are clearly isomers of each other, same molecular formula, but the arrangement of the atoms and groups is different in each case. EZ isomerism uses a systematic set of rules for assigning priority to the groups or atoms bonded to the carbons either side of the double bond. And this system is based on the rules devised by Robert Kahn, Christopher Ingold and Vladimir Prelog for naming enantiomers or optical isomers. They're often known as the Kahn-Ingold Prelog or SIP rules. So let's work our way through them. It's really very straightforward. Essentially, what they do is they assign a priority to the atoms or groups bonded to each carbon. Now, this is important. We're taking each carbon separately. So the priority of A versus B, and then the priority of X versus Y. Once we have done that, then we can say with certainty whether we have an E or a Z isomer. E comes from the German for opposite. So it's equivalent to a trans isomer in cis-trans geometric isomerism. Z comes from the German for together, and it is equivalent to the cis isomer. Is there an easy way to remember it? Well, the only way that I can think of and I've always used is Z is cis, as in this is on the same side. Apologies for my appalling accents. Okay, so let's have a look. If I have my alkene and I've got a low priority group or atom, low priority, yes, I have spelled that right, and a high priority. And on this one, I have got a low priority group as opposed to up here a high priority group and I'll explain what I mean by that in a second. Because I have got my low priority groups or you could look at your two high priority groups on opposite sides this would be the E isomer. If I were to switch these two round so that my two high priority groups are on the same side, let's have a look at that. So I can just do this very quickly. So that became high and this became low. If I've got my two high priority groups on the same side, and remember in terms of side, we're kind of thinking of it as a horizontal, on the same side, that would be the Z isomer. This will all become very clear in a minute. Priority is based on the atomic number of the atom directly bonded to the carbon either side of the double bond. The higher the atomic number, the higher the priority, or vice versa. The lower the atomic number, the lower the priority. So hydrogen has no priority whatsoever in terms of atoms that are commonly found in organic molecules. Iodine with the greatest atomic number would have the highest priority. So let's have a look at this. I'm going to take as an example this molecule here. I've got a methyl group and an ethyl group. And I'm just going to take one side at a time. So I'm not bothered about what's bonded to my left hand carbon. So R and R1 just stand for random alkyl groups. The first thing to do in an exam is to draw it out properly. So, as we said, we're not interested in that side particularly. Let's do one side at a time. So that would be C, H2, C, H3. Well, what I have here is I have a carbon bonded to this carbon, and I have a carbon bonded to this carbon. So I can't say immediately that one group is higher priority than the other, because in each case I have got a carbon directly bonded to the double bonded carbon. So we now move a step back. What's the next bonded? Well, if I take a methyl group, 
It consists of carbon bonded to three hydrogens. Whereas if I take an ethyl group, I've got carbon bonded to hydrogen, but also to another carbon. So if I take the second atom along, what I've got here is carbon versus hydrogen. Well, we know that carbon has got a higher atomic number than hydrogen. So the ethyl group would be my high priority. And the methyl group would be my low priority. Let's replace my R and my R1 with, let's go with a chlorine. And um, what should we go with here? Let's go with the naming group NH2. In this case, I can see that chlorine has got a higher atomic number than nitrogen. So chlorine is going to be my high priority group and the amine group is going to be my low priority. I've already seen that methyl was low priority compared to the ethyl group. Okay, and I'm just going to put a line through here. Remember that we are looking at priority for each carbon individually. Then we can split our molecule in half and we can see that my high priority groups are on opposite sides. So this would be the E isomer. If I wanted to redraw this with my Z isomer, I could just flip one side over compared to the other. And generally, I tend to do that with the one that's got the less number of atoms in, because it's just easier. So I'm going to keep the side the same. You could do it the other way around. It really wouldn't make any difference at all. And put my NH2 group up there and my chlorine down there. And this would be the Z isomer, because I've got my high priority groups on the same side. OK, so let's have a look at where we've got double bonds and other slightly more interesting side groups. What happens there? We stick to the rules. So my R groups are irrelevant. I'm looking at the right hand side of my molecule here. Carbon is bonded to a carbon in each case. So I need to move to the next atom along. This top group here, my carbon, have got double bond oxygen and then bonded to an oxygen double bond oxygen, bonded to a nitrogen in my lower group. Oxygen, as we can see, has got a higher atomic number than nitrogen. So my carboxylic acid group would be the high priority group, and my amide group would be the low priority. OK, so let's have a look when we have got an aldehyde versus an alcohol. So as always, draw things out in full. It makes life so much simpler. So I've got carbon to a hydrogen double bond oxygen. That's my aldehyde group. And I've got CH2OH. I've got an alcohol group down there. In each case, once again, my carbon is firstly bonded to a carbon above and below. So I need to go a step further in order to distinguish between high priority and low priority. We've got carbon bonded to oxygen in both groups. Here, I've got carbon double bond oxygen. Down here, it's carbon single bond oxygen. So what do we do now? Well, the rules say that we break this down and pretend that the carbon double bond oxygen is actually carbon bonded to two oxygens. We employ ghost atoms. So I'm going to draw this out again. So carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, I'm just going to change colour here, oxygen, that is a ghost atom. So I've kind of split my double bond. 
and down here I've got carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen, oxygen, hydrogen. Now in this case, my high priority group is where my carbon is bonded to two oxygens. I know that one is a ghost atom, so that's going to be high priority. Here, it's just bonded to one oxygen, low priority. A simple way to look at this is basically that carbon double bond oxygen would have priority over carbon single bond oxygen. And the only other place we might see this is with a carbon triple bond nitrogen would have priority over a carbon single bond nitrogen. Okay, so let's pull all this together and actually name a molecule. So first of all, I am going to split my molecule so that I'm looking at each side independently, starting with the left-hand side. Bromine has got a higher atomic number than chlorine, so bromine is high priority, chlorine is low priority. On the right-hand side, carbon bonded to a carbon bonded to a hydrogen versus carbon bonded carbon to a carbon, so high priority, low priority. So this molecule as it's written, we can see that the high priority groups, atoms, are on opposite sides. So this would be E, and the E goes in brackets. Then, you thought I'd have thought of a slightly simpler molecule in order to name it. Um, I have got my longest chain, one, two, three, four. So it's but, one in. It's got a methyl group on the second carbon. It's got a chlorine and a bromine on the first carbon, and they have to go alphabetically. So it is E hyphen one, bromo one, chloro two, methyl but two, sorry, but, one, E. Yeah, very straightforward, very straightforward indeed. If it were the Z isomer, then I would just switch over one side versus the other. So for example, my Z isomer would be carbon double bond carbon, CH3, C2H5. So I flipped over the right hand side of this molecule, so high priority, low priority, second carbon, high priority, low priority. My two high priority groups are on the same side of the double bond. Remember, same side, we're taking a horizontal look at this molecule. So this molecule here would be Z, one bromo, one chloro, two methyl but, one ene. So use this video to annotate notes that you already have and then go back to your textbooks and find lots and lots of examples that you can have a go at assigning using the rules to assign whether molecules are E or Z isomers. If this has been useful, hit the subscribe button, the effortless way to support your studies. And by clicking the link in the blurb below, it will take you straight to the Crunch Chemistry School where you'll find all the resources you need to get that A-star grade at A-level. Together we can do this.